Hey everyone, and we are taking a look at Tesla vs. Lovecraft. This game just came out today, January 26, by 10 Tons. 10 Tons uh, also recently made Judge, or I'm sorry, Jeej, like four months ago. I looked at that game, we quite liked it, and they're very famous for Crimson Lands, another twin stick shooter. Tesla vs. Lovecraft is, of course, another twin stick shooter, it's what the studio specializes in. And I enjoyed it generally. I mean, I. I was compelled enough to play the game to completion. It's still going to be an impression, still going to title impressions, but I actually did complete the game. And just the fact that it that it compelled me to play all the way through the game is a pretty big compliment. Uh, currently available on Steam, fifteen dollars. And let me just show you some representatives of the gameplay. I think we do an early level and like a late game boss to get a good idea of the spread of difficulty. So let's jump in. The story of the game is that you are Nikola Tesla. You are doing your your science. And then Lovecraft's like, hey, science is crazy. You're going to summon some monsters. You best watch out, Tesla. And then Tesla doesn't heed his warning. And of course, monsters are summoned. And now Tesla, who's basically steampunk Iron Man, needs to go through and uh, fight against evil. He needs to stand against evil. Which is our job as Tesla. You run around. You have a teleporter, which is critical. You have your Iron Man suit, your mech which you collect parts for throughout it slowly drains over time power ups weapons drop exactly as you would expect enemies spawn throughout and you level up as you kill enemies and get perks which are critical this game it is oh it's so critical <laughs> to grab these power ups and grab these perks otherwise you're doomed on the harder level you probably see i might not even be able to complete it but not getting a decent weapon and not having good power-ups and not having decent perks is just you're probably going to die. Like you can't keep up the number of enemies that spawn if you don't keep your power level sufficient. After you collect uh, enough parts, you can just summon the mech again. I don't. If you focus on on doing the mech, you probably get a few summons there. Upgrades for the mech, meta upgrades. We'll talk about those after the levels, which help you out. With um, keeping the mech running, I only ever get it like twice per level though. I tend not to worry about it too much, because I'm too busy running around trying not to die. And it's difficult for me to find these parts when I'm, you know, just trying not to die. A lot of cool upgrades, a lot of cool weapons, a little Goss rifle, a lot of good perks, and then they all interact. Power-ups, I'm glad there's a wide variety of everything. Variety of power-ups, variety of perks, variety of weapons. It's not huge, there's like a dozen weapons, I think, something like that. There's not a massive amount of weapons. But the interplay between the different weapons, upgrades, and perks is really where the uh, really where the gameplay becomes interesting. At least your progression through the levels. And of course, it's just I mean, it's just a solid little arcade action. You can run around, you teleport, you trigger trigger your abilities, and gun enemies down. You get the more enemies you kill, multi kills, you get extra perks and power ups, which of course can be. Which can let you kind of snowball into very powerful, uh, into a very powerful situation. You can get flung into a position where you become very strong, so you're able to slay a great number of enemies at once, which drops extra power ups and perks, which makes you even stronger, which makes you feel real good. So let's go after a boss level. So that was just a regular level in normal mode. Uh, the kind of the narrative of the game is that there's these three different planes all taking place in Arkham, but there's they're uh, all the same planes and level. I mean, there's a little bit of difference. The paths are drawn differently. I'm pretty sure it's all the same levels, though, just three times in a row, and they become increasingly difficult. So let's go with the first showdown. This is the first boss level on the hardest tier of difficulty. See, immediately, way more enemies. Stars will line 95 seconds. That's when the boss spawns. I'm not going to level up right away in the mech, because I've noticed that, at least in co-op, there's one power-up that if you get it while you're in the mech, you don't actually get it. At least the player in the mech doesn't get it. I'm not sure if it still is bugged. Or even if it is still bug period, or if it's just a co-op thing or what. I guess I can level up now. Extra barrel is super good. Weapons fire more. We need to ditch this pistol ASAP because the pistol, the default pistol, is hot garbage. Do not want that any longer than we need it. Weapon damage. You die very quickly. Once you get surrounded, you're, you're toast. You can get some extra... You can get some defensive perks, which help you survive a little bit longer. But if you're caught, you're, you're pretty much done. Like we've we've only been uh, we've only been hit a few times already at half HP and I haven't even been surrounded. There's just a couple of these these fish dudes grabbing me as I walk past. 
You also have these Kaboo statues that spawn. I killed it before it really fully spawned, but those act as monster spawners, which spawn increasingly dangerous foes until they just spawn the highest tier of enemies and then disappear. Either crystals are what we use for meta upgrades, which I'll show you at the end. This level's actually a little easier than I thought. Or that I remember. Maybe I'm just doing maybe I'm just getting some good drops. Should show you the second the final level. I show you the second just to give you a real idea of the chaos. There's some hard levels. I think the level right before this final second last boss level gets really crazy. I am pretty hurt though. As much as I'm saying we're doing pretty well, I am very hurt. Here is one of the epic perks. So these are very rare perks that show up occasionally, and they're usually pretty good. So here we get a bunch of free lightning bolts. Start striking our enemies. There it goes. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Your sign of Dagon, the first boss. Reminds me of a Doom enemy. There we go, we get a bunch of- Oh, he's gonna shoot me to death. He did, in fact, shoot me to death. Ugh, I was trying to stay too close to him to see the lightning bolts strike him, and, and I, I instead got shot to death. Uh, let's choose a different level. This one, Scaring the Valley. Yeah, this one gets chaotic. I'll show you this one real fast. Not promising any success. These are difficult levels, even with our upgrades. And then I'll show you the upgrade system and survival mode. Uh, arcade action's fun, it's very fast-paced, it's consistent. The survival mode we'll be taking a look at, I like, except I really get a sense that it could be slowed down a little bit. It starts off pretty slow, as you'd expect, but then pretty quickly ramps up to ridiculous levels of difficulty, and you're just, you're, you're goner. And actually, it's on this same map, the, the uh, survival mode takes place. We are in big trouble here. Oh, there's tentacles spawning out of the ground? Yeah, those tentacles, um, if you get caught by a tentacle, if it slaps you, you pretty much did. I think they one-shot you, unless uh, you have dodge and manage to dodge. I'll definitely take bounce and ricochet in this map. Ricochet, bouncing bolts this map is really, really good. And the ghost rifle's okay. It's much better once you get extra barrels. Oh, our spell right now it stuns enemies. I like that. Oh, fireball it's upgrade. Uh, get it. Get out of there. Okay. Uh, I don't really want dodging right now. There are better perks. More damage? Probably. Okay, more damage. We don't need defenses. We just kill our enemy before, before we need defenses, right? Grab a couple parts of the mech. Because the mech has a separate HP bar, so if we're in trouble, we can mech up and maybe survive. We have some champion enemies. Champion enemies have never really like explained. They just kind of show up when you're expected to deal with them. The ball lightning gun is the worst, and I hate that it's even in the game. It it can be okay if you have a lot of upgrades, but the problem is it's kind of presented as like the final tier of gun. But if you're just if you don't have a lot of extra barrels, and, oh, oh man, I'm, uh, um, <laughs> oh, if it's not enabled, if you don't have things to enable it, it's it's bad. It's a bad weapon. Let's take some regen, because I'm about to die. Regen can help us not die. Ugh. Yeah, it's kind of presented like the final gun. But it's kind of bad, unless you have a lot of upgrades. Oh, I got caught by a tentacle. You see how, many, how, much, how much we instantly get swarmed. It's kind of bad if you don't have the right upgrades. We'll give that, give that level another shot. And then you'll see this level again, because I'll go do survival mode. <laughs> and that's more of the same. But the difficulty is much different. Yeah, the difficulty could be adjusted a little bit in survival mode. Because there are leaderboards and everything, but I think I would like the difficulty to be smoothed out a little bit. That way there's some more variety in the scores. Because then they're all if the difficulty is so impossibly hard it gets like impossibly hard super fast, uh, the scores seem to be normalizing a little bit and are kind of dependent on how many upgrades we have, how many of those meta upgrades we have that we're going to be taking a look at. Gosh, shotguns. Insanely good. Probably one of my favorite weapons uh, in the game. Also, we really like the bullets pierce perk. We don't need that with a weapon that already pierces. Uh, more damage. Don't need fire rate. The weapon doesn't. You know, this weapon is about fire rate. Nice little counter in the top left corner of how many enemies are currently on the map. Extra barrels. Fantastic upgrade. We just fire more bullets. It's like 100% damage increase. 
probably the best offensive upgrade. Because if, if uh, Reaper is 20% open damage, extra barrels would just be, in some instances, 100% open damage. And Reloader's weapon's fire rate is limited by its reload speed, so definitely take that. Alright, I think with the extra barrels on this Goss sh shotgun... Oh, I'm about to die again. Already, you see, we already took so much damage. In the hard difficulties, you are not forgiven for taking damage very easily. Little spawner down here. Oh, and it dropped a perk, which is useless for us because we are already piercing. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Get away. Give me some fire bolts. Okay, we're alright. I'm happy with the shotgun. Rifle could be okay. I'm happy with the shotgun. Let's take regen. That might end up saving our life. Oh, if I get if I get tapped by something, it's not a death sentence necessarily. Okay, um, extra speed would be great. Oh, here's a nuke. Gotta get that. All right, we're safe. And I actually picked up the ghost rifle. Okay, we have uh, extra barrels. To make the ghost rifle way better. And dodging now, we're fast enough. And at a certain point, you end up killing so many enemies so fast, you start leveling up very, very quickly. Which isn't a complaint, it's actually kind of fun. Let's see what your selection of upgrades are. It looks like we actually have done it, because these last two enemies are probably tentacles, who so obviously can't move to come get you. I'm pretty sure I almost got crushed by that. Hey, ball lightning gun, I use it there. You see? That looks really good, right? That seems, that seems pretty good. The problem is those balls of lightning, if they strike an enemy, they just stop and explode. Which, if you're facing a swarm, you shoot it out, it lightnings a couple enemies, the bullet hits an enemy and explodes, and it's just garbage. It's just, it doesn't fierce, it doesn't fire fast enough, it's, not, it's just not good enough. If you have lots of extra barrels, it could be nice, but yeah, that was a decent representation of the gameplay. Here's the some of the meta upgrade systems. They have quests. Variety of quests, daily quests, you have a countdown timer until you get a new quest. You complete the quest to get the Aether Crystals, you even saw me getting some of the Aether Crystals in the gameplay. And then that lets us buy upgrades. Such as shuffling, you saw me shuffle uh, perks a couple times, additional charges to your abilities. Um, teleporting through enemy to deal damage, I always forget I have this, doesn't seem particularly good. Uh, upgrade to the mech. You, uh, you saw the mech only lasted a certain amount of time, you can of course upgrade. I haven't done that, because like I said, I only use the mech. I sometimes only get the mech once per level, oftentimes none. I just don't seem to be hunting it down. Not that it's not good, it's just not the way I'm playing the game. Uh, additional charge of teleport, so good. Increased chance for those epic perks, super good. There's some really good ones. One where your teleport has no cooldown. Another one where you get a death ray, which is very powerful. Um, I'm thinking of one where, oh, your abilities, your spells, they have no charges. You can just spam them like crazy. And then start with free random perks, very, very powerful. And also, on top of those meta upgrades, you get damage bonuses based on the number of monsters you kill. So the monster trophy level, you get a percentage damage bonus to these monsters depending on how many that you've killed. So you have 130% damage bonus to the basic deep one enemies. But compared to the much more rare Shagas, only a 20% damage upgrade. Let's go to survival mode. And you see that it starts off pretty slow and then quickly gets out of control. So yeah, good game, been enjoying it. Uh, a couple complaints, sometimes little Tesla here gets stuck on some random garbage and can't move, and then you saw how quickly you die if you can't move. You just, you, you take a lot of damage very quickly. If you can't move, like you're done. And he loves to get stuck on random junk. Let's see if I can like damage, yeah, like that rock right there. You can easily be, ooh, a million enemies on screen, you're dodging, you're zigging, you're zagging, and they run to this pillar, get held up, and you're dead. And it's very frustrating when that happens. Um, another thing is that in co-op, the map, the, the camera tries to keep you both on, uh, like, both on screen, of course. As you kind of expect from co-op version. I'm glad it has co-op and the co-op generally works well. It's more of a minor gripe. I mean, still, if you're looking for a, if you like twin-stick shooters and, like, want to play a twin-stick shooter with their friend, well then, cool. <laughs> uh, Nikola versus Tesla. But the map sometimes pulls out. If you get separated, the map pulls out. You're very far away. You have like half the enemies are following you, half are following your partner, which I think is very difficult to deal with. So it's not particularly elegant. It works. It works well enough. It's fun. It's satisfactory. My wife played a lot of the game with me. 
But it's, it's, I mean, it's not perfect. As one would probably expect from any, you know, anything. Anything in the world. Okay, we're doing alright. Still really slow. Still starting off slow. We haven't gotten to the part where it's scary yet. You'll notice when we get to that part. <laughs> You'll notice very quickly. Oh, we're, we're starting to get there already. We're getting more enemies on the screen than we can handle. And I would like to see... I kind of would like to see the survival mode um, limited in your upgrades. Because you, you bring in your meta upgrades from the rest of the game in the survival mode. But then you also get, you see in my top left, you get a score, which can be, you know, be posted online. Your, your personal high score, congratulations. But I would like... I mean, that seems kind of unfair, right? You just play the game more and you get more upgrades and then your Tesla is stronger than other Teslas, so you get more points in survival mode? That seems kind of silly. I think they should normalize in survival mode, normalize the character. So that way it's just, you know, player skill and strategy and not just raw upgrades. It does, I mean, it does encourage players to keep playing, to complete quests, to get the upgrade, or uh, complete their quests, to buy upgrades, to be more powerful, get more epic perks, get more starting perks. It's just, it just very distasteful. Anything with a competitive hint to it that you can be just at different levels of power kind of arbitrarily, yeah, this is... I'm not into that. I think most of the modern gaming... Um, Modern gaming opinions are not, you know, they're against that. I right, just look at the fallout that Battlefield had. That was, uh, not Battlefield, Battlefront had. Just Battlefront, just bat Star Wars Battle. Okay, don't, don't give me that. Don't criticize me for that one. It's an easy mistake to make. Alright, we're doing, I'm about to show you how quickly it gets unmanageable, but we're actually doing alright still. Had this gun super good. We had some good upgrades. We are starting to get surrounded though, and can't keep up much longer. All right, here's the point where it gets out of control. You see how quickly like, we're doing? I was just talking about how good we're doing, and now we're about to be inundated with enemies. Oh, never mind. Some nuke here. Who grab that? Am I actually gonna get a new high score? Uh, push enemies away. Yeah, that's a little defensive. Maybe I should have taken that. Also, you can get upgrade amount of teleport charges. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead, man. Faster reloading. What you can do... Oh, I didn't do it. You can't... It is possible to teleport through the monsters. You can get an upgrade to teleport through monster spawns. I didn't do it. Um, I'm super dead. I didn't get to do it. I got a new high score. Awesome. Because... But the reason you know why I got a new high score? Because I had more meta upgrades... Since the last time I played, I got more of those uh, monster trophies. I got more upgrades. I don't think I had random perks when I was doing survival mode before. So that is kind of kind of weird. What do you want me to buy? 51. What do you want me to buy? Extra mech health? I don't care about the mech. Extra shuffling is not bad. But there you go. Tesla versus Lovecraft. A, It's not innovative. It's not very innovative. It's not doing like anything crazy with the twin stick shooter genre. If you played a twin stick shooter, then you know exactly what to expect from, expect from Tesla versus Lovecraft. But it's a very good twin stick shooter. Very fast-paced, responsive, um, entirely about the action, and on top of the action, well, you have some you know, upgrades to pick up, both in the level. You can also you change your game, uh, your playstyle within the level, different weapons, different perks, different uh, power-ups. And then a little bit of meta upgrades on here with the crystal system and the monster trophy system. As well as, hey, you know, you got your daily quests. Everyone loves daily quests. They're typically reserved for more competitive games, and it's kind of competitive with the survival mode, but then also kind of not, because then the upgrades get kind of like, get this weird insidious air about them, but it's not as if you can microtransaction crystals. I don't know, this is, it seems, that part seems a little weird to me. But that was Tesla vs. Lovecraft. Check it out. $15 on Steam by Ten Ton Studios, available today. Leave a like, enjoy the video, subscribe for more fun like Twitch, I'll see you guys next time.